MashaAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal has given us many, many blessings. Many of us forget the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. We have the blessings of good weather these days. Despite having weather had rained down the worst since records have begun. Alhamdulillah, we're living, we're living in safety. No bombs dropping on the heads like our brothers and sisters in Syria and Afghanistan and many other countries. We're living in safety, alhamdulillah. And despite this safety, and despite these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, and the many blessings inside you, which the scientists are constantly discovering blessings. They're discovering the blessings that Allah has given you in your body, in your cells, in your heart, in your lungs, in your eyes, in your ears, and they're constantly discovering more and more and more things. And they're finding universes within your own body. Each cell is like a universe. This is Allah Azza wa showing you His power, His Qudra. وَلَكِنْ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى has given us certain things we have to do in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to do certain things and stay away from certain things. <coughs> and there's a hadith written by Imam Hakim in which you know, an authority of Jabal <coughs> that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam came out one day. <coughs> and he came to the Sahaba and he told the Sahaba that Jibreel, my friend Khalil, has come to me. <coughs> and said to me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, Allah created a man and this man was in the middle of the ocean and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this man on a mountain in the middle of the ocean and as far as I could see in all four directions there was nothing but water and this man and the, on this mountain Despite him being surrounded by salt water, and we know that water from the ocean you can't drink. It's not alba, it's not sweet, it's salty water. And if you were to drink the sea water, you'd probably die if you drank a lot of it. <coughs> so, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a spring. Despite him being surrounded by the salt water that you can't drink, not fit for human consumption, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created spring water in the middle of the ocean. <coughs> on this mountain of him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for him a tree in which had roman, pomegranate, <coughs> for him to eat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this tree give him, a grow a pomegranate every night. So all this man would do, he would wake up, do his wudu, wash himself, eat at night from the pomegranate, and the rest of the day, and the heart, he'd worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody to talk to, no haram to look at, no backbiting to listen to, no gossip to get involved in, no women to look at, no temptation. All he has is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his mind. And he's in khalwa, seclusion, and he has his provisions. And then one day he realizes that his, his ajal, his appointed time, his death is near. And many people, before they die, they realize Death is coming. Many of the elders, many of the salihin, the awliya, they feel that death is close. And he then he realized death is close and he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after a five times the normal lifetime worth of worship. Five hundred years worth of worship, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, take me when I'm in my frustration and my sujood. And you know when a hadith sahih, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, no, is closer to the person when he's in his prostration. The closest Allah is to you when you're in your sujood. That's the closest Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So we ask, Ya Allah, take me. If you're going to take me, take me when I'm in my sujood. This is the closest Allah to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this. <coughs> and he asks Allah, Ya Allah, I don't want my body to decompose. From the ground to eat my body. I want my body to remain as it is. So I can, I can be praying in prostration. Nothing takes me away from you, Ya Allah, even in death. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders that the ground does not eat him. His body does not decompose. Then the angels, they say, they, they see him. They go, the angels go up and down and they see him in prostration. He's dead. Centuries, centuries. And then Yawm al comes. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects him in prostration, in sujood. And this is something very important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect you. Every single person, you and I. Allah subhanahu wa 
Allah is going to resurrect you. Depending on how you died. So when you die, and what you're doing when you die. is very important. Husn al If you are in the masjid, praying, and you die, in salah, you're going to be resurrected in salah. If you die next to the Kaaba and Hajj, you're going to be resurrected during your Hajj. If you die in the Ihram, you could be resurrected in your Ihram. If you die giving Zakah, you'd be given resurrection and in the state of giving Zakah. Well, can. If you die in places where you shouldn't be. If you die, perhaps, while drunk, drink and drive. If you die from taking too many drugs. If you die because you're high. If you die because you're overdosed. If you die because you've got a disease, a sexually transmitted disease. Or if you die because you're doing something, you're stealing, or robbing, or backbiting, or lying, or cheating, or whatever else, or you're beating somebody up, be it a woman or a man, or doing anything haram. Whatever you're doing, and, with, and with heavy, with whoever you're doing it with, you're not the when you're resurrected. In front of everybody, and they're going to see you. Or you did. So this man gets, gets resurrected and he's in sujood. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, because this man did nothing haram, nothing to do but worship Allah, he says, Khudu abdi ila jannah Take my slave to Jannah. But Allah Azza wa Jalla gives a reality, reality check. He, he says something. Birahmati. With my mercy. With my mercy, he goes into heaven. <clears throat> Not because of anything he did, but because of my rahmah. And the man says, hold on a minute. Ya Allah, ya, I, I worshipped you for 500 years. I'm an island. Nobody there. Nobody distract me. Nothing haram for me to do. Or say, oh look at, I worship you. I, my, my food was halal, and my provision was halal. Don't my 500 years ibadah mean anything? Why is it that my 500 years don't count? Why is it that I'm not going to the Jannah with my 500 years of ibadah? And Allah Azza wa Jalla said, okay, come back. Let's put your 500 years of worship that you think deserves you to get into heaven. Let's put it on the scales. <coughs> and let's put all the blessings that I've given you <coughs> on the scale. And let's see which one's heavier. If your worship, your family years worth of worship, half a millennium, half a century, if that's more heavier in the scales than what I've given you, just the blessings I've given you, then okay, then you can have it your way, you can go to heaven based on what you've done, on your good works. So Allah Azza wa Jalla tells the angels, and they take his 500 years with his worship, put it on the scales. And then they take all the blessings that Allah Azza wa Jalla has given this man on one scale. And guess what? That his 500 years of worship, with no haram, no missing salah, no missing fajr, no backbiting, no lying, his eyesight, the blessing that Allah has given him because of his eyesight is more heavier than his 500 years of worship. <coughs> in other words, Allah, what Allah gave you in your eyesight, is not even worth your 500 years of worship. So on what basis do you, do you and I think we should go to heaven because of our worship? So then Allah Azza wa Jal then says, Khudu Abdi, then no, take my slave, take him to hell. Because Khalas, he had his way, he didn't want to listen to me, he thought his 500 years of worship meant something. <coughs> they take him and they drag him. This is somebody who has done haram. But if you're going to challenge Allah Azza wa Jal, you want to change the rules, then this is what's going to happen. And then he cries out, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, de rahmatika, de rahmatika, de rahmatika. Oh Allah, with your mercy, with your mercy, with your mercy. Forget my 500 years. With your rahmah, take me to heaven. And Allah Azza wa Jalla tells the angel, stop. Bring him back. And he comes back. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla gives him a reality check. Allah reminds him of just where he came from and who he is. And what Allah did for him. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, 
Who made you from nothing? You were nothing. You were some liquid. <coughs> sperm. That if you got it on your trousers, you must feel disgusted. That's where you came from. That's where you came from. Who made you? From nothing. And he's Ante Ya Allah. You, Ya Allah. And he says, Who gave you the strength to worship 500 years? You think yourself? You think your body? You think you did it all by yourself? Who gave you the strength to do all this? And he's Ante Ya Rabbi. And then he says to him, Who gave you the, the fresh water in the middle of the ocean on this mountain? Who gave you the spring water? Who was it? You? Ante Ya Rabbi. Who gave you the pomegranate, the tree, to grow and give you pomegranate, a romance every night, when it only comes once a season? Who, who gave you that? Who do you think? You! Because Ante Ya Rabbi, Ante. <coughs> and who, when you asked him to resurrect you on your Qiyamah and, and, make, and take your soul when you're in sujood, who answered you? Who gave you that? Was it you? And he says, Anta, 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 So then Allah Azza wa looks at him and says, Bi rahmatika, Utkhul the Jannah. With my mercy, you're going to enter the heaven. And then Allah Azza wa says, You are a good servant. So enter into heaven. Now, subhanAllah, in the hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad al Tabarani, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa tells the Sahaba that none of you shall enter into heaven. Let me get to the Jannah. Illa bi rahmatillah. Except the one who has the mercy of Allah. Allah's mercy. If Allah favors you, Allah gives you His mercy, only through Allah's mercy you're going to get into heaven. And think about it. You're going to live 60, 70 years, maybe 40 years. Half of that time you're probably not practicing. Ah, half of that time not practicing perhaps. And you think with approximately 20 years of worship, you're going to get everlasting heaven with 20 years of worship or 10 years of worship if you did if you prayed on time. Because let's face it, when you're 15, 16, many of our boys don't pray. By the time they get to 20, they start to think. By the time they get to 30, they may start to do one or two things. By the time they get to 40, they start to wake up. And by the time they get to 50, if they get to 50, you start coming to the And then live what? 10 years? So you think you're going you think for your 10 years of worship, you deserve Jannah. Allah Azza wa Jalla is telling our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Nobody enters into heaven through your worship Allah Azza wa Jalla Sahaba says وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Even you Even you, Rasul, even you don't go into heaven through your works And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a hadith in the name of Ahmed Al-Tabarani وَلَا أَنَا حَتَّى أَنَا Even I don't enter into heaven except through Allah's mercy so I ask, Ayyub, what's the point of our prayer? What's the point of zakah? What's the point of hajj? What's the point of staying away from the haram? What's the point of all these things if, if we're not going into heaven through these things? The ulama have said that you getting into heaven is through Allah's mercy. Through Allah's rahmah, you get into heaven. Because only Allah's rahmah will get you into heaven. Nothing you do deserves heaven. Ayyub, okay. But Allah Azza wa Jal then said, look at your deeds. How much good deeds you did? Depend on how high you go in Jannah. Because there's seven, samawat, the seven levels in heaven. Al Firdos, Al A'la, inshaAllah ta'ala. Al Firdos, the highest level of Jannah, Al Firdos. But you have to do the acts of the highest level of people of paradise to get into that. If you can't, you get the second. And if you can't, you get the third. Depending on how much your salah, your zakah, your hajj, and how good of a person. Don't think just salah and zakah is going to get you, and you a rotten person outside the mosque. MashaAllah from the malaika in the masjid and outside you're like, man. Outside you're treating your women, beating your women. Outside you're beating your children. And we have many cases now, every week, every week people complaining, going to the authorities, child service is taking children from Muslims because the children aren't safe now in people's houses. And even they come in Jum'ah and sit in front, like in the masjid, as if from, from the angels. Salah and zakah and doing all these things. You don't, don't think this is going to help you, brother. Because there's another hadith that says on the Qiyamah, Allah Azza wa Jalla is going to hold you accountable and anybody. And something interesting for you to understand, Allah Azza wa Jalla tells everybody in hell, and anybody in heaven does something wrong to you. From the Muslims. Have they done anything wrong? And if there is, let's take them out, let's take you out, and let's see everyone takes his due. So if he does something wrong to you, you take away his good deeds. And maybe this is a reason for some of us 
Inshallah, none of us, inshallah, but we have to be careful. Maybe there's a reason for some of us to enter into hell because we dealt badly with some of our, 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 our fellow mankind. Or maybe some of our Muslims. Don't think your salah and your zakah is going to help you. But this is a place to start. Start your salah. Start your jum'ah. Don't miss jum'ah from now on. If you know people are work, missing jum'ah, tell them to come to jum'ah. If you're missing fajr, set your alarm clock. Do yourself a favor. Huh? Take your phone out. Make an alarm on your, on your phone fajr. Make your alarm fajr. Look at the time for fajr. Set your alarm. If you can do it, do it now, inshallah. Set your alarm for fajr. Wake up in fajr. Until when is this ummah going to be asleep? Yani, you don't think that these things happening in Syria eh, is because we're good. You don't think that these bombs dropping on our brothers in Syria is because we're, we're behaved. It's because we're missing our fajr. It's because we're not praying on time. It's because we're looking at haram. It's because we're not looking after our women. It's because we're not doing the things we should be doing. It's because we're not following the Sharia. And Allah is unhappy. And when you see a, a people Allah is not happy with, then Allah then brings a punishment on the people. This is, a, this is the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal. So if you're willing enough to fight in Syria, that's not the answer. Because there's enough people there. What's the answer? You want to change what's going on in Syria? You want to change what's going on in Afghanistan? I'll tell you something. It's going to be hard. Wake up Fajr. Start with the Fajr. Do jihad of your nafs. Jahid wa anfusikum. Do jihad in your yourself. Get yourself out of bed. And pray Fajr on time. Lower your gaze from that girl that you're talking to. Lower your gaze. Don't talk to her. Be a man. Put the phone down. Say, Khalas, sister. Khalas, girl. I can't talk to you anymore. Why? Because the brothers, our brothers and sisters are dying all over this country, all over the world. People are dying, and it's because of our sins. And don't think it's not. This is the way Allah works. His sunnah. Allah does not change the state of our people until they themselves change what's within them. The answer to what's going on in these Muslim lands, to the rape of our sisters, to the killing of our children, the answer is us. Don't blame Israel. What can they do? What can Israel do? They can't do anything. We have Rabbul Alameen. But that can, Allah is there, but where are we? We're asleep when it comes to failure. We're looking at the girls. We're smoking drugs. We're cheating. We're lying. We're backpacking. We're doing all the things Allah has told us not to do. We're doing all. And you think Allah is not going to punish? And it's a mercy. Well, like it's a mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal because this punishment comes now. Because if it comes in the next life, it's a whole different matter. How if we make dua for our brothers and sisters in Syria and first of all, we make tawbah. And we recognize that because of our sins, this ummah, this ummah is a body. And when the body is sick, the whole body feels the fever. If your finger is cut, the whole body feels pain. And this is the ummah. And we have sincere brothers and sisters who feel pain every night when they see what's going on in these Muslim lands. Where's the pain for missing Fajr? Where's the pain because you've done something haram? Where's the pain because you've, you've looked at something or you've slept around? Where's the Torah from Allah? You want to change something? You want to do jihad? Do jihad of your nafs. Get yourself up. Change your life. Make the tawbah. Make the change in your life. And you start seeing, once the ummah starts waking up, once the ummah starts realizing who its prophet is, and the greatness of this ummah, and when it the greatness of this ummah is when it follows our prophet. And the humiliation of this ummah is when it doesn't follow the prophet. And Allah Azza wa opens up the doors. You watch. It's a, promise, it's a promise. This is a sunnah from Allah. Get yourselves together, change yourselves. Be nice. If the women are wearing hijab, put hijab on. You want to do something for your brothers and sisters in Syria? Sisters, put hijab on. Don't wear tight clothes. Stop wearing the perfume. Get rid of those numbers. Marry the girl. Be nice to your wife. Be nice to your children. Allah then looks at you. Allah then becomes happy. Allah removes the punishment. If you understand, you understand this. I know you have to use look at history, look at the sunnah that Allah has well placed down on this planet, and the sooner you realize that, the quicker we can stop crying over our brothers and sisters. Until when are we going to cry over our brothers and sisters in the Muslim world?